This episode of Homemade was previously recorded in front of a live stream audience who asked questions and cook along during the show. If you love cooking and want to join us in the kitchen, visit homemadecooking.com to register for free live classes. Now, let's get cooking. Hello, everybody. Happy, shall I say, biggest week of cooking of the year. We are doing a French bistro classic. That is what it's all about. Um, thank you so much for being here. I'm Joel Gehrman. I'm the head chef and founder here at Homemade. Thrilled to meet you if this is our first time meeting each other and thrilled to see you if I get to see you all the time. And today we have a very, very culinarian uh, first timer in the chat. Give it up for Jen. Hey Jen, how are you? Hi Joel, hi everybody, good to be here. Jen is amazing, Seattle native, right? Where in Seattle, what neighborhood again? I live in Columbia City. Columbia City. Southeast Seattle. Southeast. And Jen, just real quick, because we're all big foodies and chefs out there and cook, home cooks, why, why do you love cooking? Uh, I love food. I love the way it looks, I love the way it tastes and smells, I love feeding people. Yes. Isn't that what it's all about? Yep. Just getting people around the table, making those connections. But let's get started. We can't have steak au poivre without having something to mop up the au poivre, the sauce, the pepper sauce with. If you're not familiar with what steak au poivre is, it's steak with black pepper sauce. Really easy to do. I love it because it's kind of a one pan wonder, but you gotta have something. You gotta have something to kind of just soak it all in. So. Traditionally, it's steak frites. You're gonna have a little pile of frites. Um, if you go to Paris, that's what's gonna be served in the bistro. But this would be great with mashed potatoes. So here's how we do our frites now. We're gonna do a little bit of truffle oil, but this is super simple. We're starting with an Idaho russet. I like these just because the starch content is right. So I just kind of cut them, and then I'm just cutting them into kind of thick, we call them baton. And then you just kind of cut these into little kind of frites. And then we put ours in a bowl of cold water. And we kind of toss that through. And you can see as I'm tossing that through, the water gets super foggy. That is potato starch, which is great, but it makes things a little bit crispy, a little bit difficult to get crispy. So you want to wash off just that coating of the starch. And then you just want to take the time and you want to dry them off. So I'm going to just take these puppies out get them into my little rag here, and just really make sure you give them a really good dry. So I just took the same bowl that we had all the potato starches and you know the water in it soaking, dried that out. I got my potatoes nice and dry, and I'm just gonna pick these guys up, super gentle, right back in. Um, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of truffle oil. It could totally just be normal olive oil, even just like an avocado oil would be nice, but we're going about a tablespoon of that. Good amount of kosher salt. Right, give that a quick toss. You can already smell the truffle oil. I've got two cloves of garlic. I'm just gonna smash it up. Very important with this. This is not like a semi-mince. This is not something where you just wanna like, uh, kind of break it up. You really wanna pulverize this garlic because you want it to kind of almost melt into the potatoes, and also, if you even have the slightest chunk of garlic, it will burn, because we're at 450 degrees, which I forgot to mention. 450 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so I have two cloves, smashing these puppies up, and the way to really break it down is just to add a little bit of kosher salt over the top of those, and then chop this down as fine as you can into the potatoes, and then the best tools in the world, Got to use them. Get your hands in there and move that garlic around, all that truffle oil around. And then you have your blue steel debouillé sheet pan. And you just kind of scatter these. And if you can, try and make sure they're not overlapping. But if they overlap a little bit, it's not the end of the world. So this looks great. They're seasoned. They've got room to breathe. We're going to pop them in and add about 10 minutes in we're gonna flip them around. All right, so frites, our roasted potatoes are getting crispy in the oven, all on that blue steel sheet, we love it. 
we're now going to think about the steak. You know, we obviously as chefs love ribeye because when you look at the fat, it's obviously super well marbled, but there's just so much fat happening inside, right? Like the gorgeous, this is why it's called the ribeye, gorgeous fat just kind of marbling in between is why the ribeye is so buttery and delicious. It's obviously super fatty. So I'm on about a seven, I'm gonna go to an eight out of 10. So first step to the apoive is the pepper. So I'm gonna start with black pepper and really crust each side. And I'm sprinkling from up high so the pepper really scatters evenly. And I'm gonna do the same thing with some kosher salt. All right. So from up high and almost over season your steaks. That's kind of important. Over season the outside because there's no way to season the inside. So you have to kind of over season the outside. And I'm just going to lightly press the salt and pepper into each side. I'm going to do the other side real quick. All right. Use my black pepper from up high. And again, I mean, I want to see the steak, but I really want to crust on that black pepper and then a good amount of salt. Over season it. All right. So next up, pan's nice and hot. We're going to go with two fats. We're going to go with olive oil and a little bit of butter. If we were just to go with olive oil, you're, you're missing a little bit of the richness of the butter. You're still fine. If you're just going to go with butter, there's no chance. It's just going to flame up. It's going to smoke out and these are gonna just sear and it's gonna kinda of have a burn flavor to it. So the olive oil and the butter kind of allow themselves to kind of chill. And look at the smoke on this. Like that is everything. Lay those steaks in, away from you. And in we go. First and foremost, from a cooking perspective, you know I always say this when we're sealing, searing, don't touch them. I know you want to so bad, we all want to poke them. We love tongs in our lives. But the reality is, oh, I got to add a little butter. <clears throat> the reality is, the more we play with them, the less they're going to build a crust. Look at that beautiful look. So again, I don't want to move it. I, don't, I just laid them in, and I'm letting them do their thing. All right. So you'll notice I haven't touched these, but I've been very, very eager to just take a look. So what you want to do when you're cooking these steaks is kind of crouch down and kind of see the color of the steak on the side. Is it starting to kind of creep up on the side and kind of get to that halfway point? And I can tell just by kind of looking at the edges that this is getting pretty golden brown. So I'm just going to kind of peek on one side and that is pretty darn perfect. So I'm going to flip that and this is what I want you guys to be able to see. Look at the color on that. That crust, that black pepper crust is everything, is everything. So I'll take a moment. I know these are kind of searing on the other side. So this is actually a good time to grab a towel and I'll bring them out so you can see them. They're not gonna be there yet, but they're sure gonna be close. So I'm gonna grab a towel. And this is actually very nifty. Nice little spatula by Debouillet and you just want to kind of give them a quick little flip. Look at that gorgeous pea, oh my gosh. Again, you're going to see a difference in just the frite by just moving them around. So back in the oven they go for about another 10 minutes. And we'll let those finish up. These steaks, I mean, at this point, they've kind of done their job and they look gorgeous. So I'm going to take them out. The other side is stunning. And you guys asked me earlier, how do you make sure that you have a nice juicy steak? Rest, 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 rest. So I'm gonna take this fat and get rid of it. The fat at this point is too much fat. It's gonna make the sauce dull, right? So I might hold a little bit onto it, but I'm just gonna pour a little bit out, right? And so I'm gonna turn down the heat to about a three. Just kind of let the smoke subside, take a breath. The steaks are out, they're hanging out, they're great. Nothing really needs to happen to them. They're just perfect. And then we've got some shallots. You can use onion, it doesn't have to be shallots. You can go with a little bit of garlic. 
we've got literally one shallot that we just minced up really small. So we're gonna add this in right into the bottom of our debouillé. They start to kind of sweat those. So we don't really want to caramelize them. Just kind of lightly take off a little bit of that heat, concentrate the sugars just a little bit. Just kind of let them start doing their thing. All right. So at this point, the shallots have had a minute. They don't need forever. And again, they're so small. We mince them so small. You just kind of want to barely let them kind of sweat out. And then I'm going with a little bit of cognac, brandy. And you just want to kind of cook this until it barely evaporates, until it's what we call a sec, almost dry. Cool? So I can see you just, as you add that, you kind of swirl it around. It smells so good, by the way. It just starts to kind of concentrate, and almost all of it is gone. You want to leave just the smallest amount. Next, I'm going to go with some beef stock. Okay, chicken stock totally works. And at this point, I want to turn up the heat to high and really start to reduce that down. And this is going to become that gorgeous, sticky, glazy sauce that we're all looking for with the steak up love. So kind of bring this up. You'll see bubbles start to happen. And this is my own thing. You don't need to do it. The recipe doesn't call for it. But I wanted to put this all on a clear plate as we took the fat out of the steak. So you guys can see, look how much, remember when we over seasoned it in the beginning? Look how much black pepper fell off the steak. Well, this is a black pepper steak. So we're going with more black pepper. Again, not in the recipe, but go with another handful of black pepper in your mortar and pestle. And this I leave a little bit chunkier. I want to bite into a little piece of pepper, right? And kind of get that in there. So we're doubling down on the black pepper. Cool. Oh, this looks so good and smells incredible. All right. This is about there, right? You've just barely reduced. It's getting nice and thick. I'm going to give it about another minute and then we'll talk steak. But the next part is absolutely optional. It adds a little richness. I don't think it's traditional. I would say traditional at this point is to kind of beat in a nice room temp stick of unsalted butter. But just a touch of cream adds a nice roundness. We're literally just going to go with about a tablespoon. Maybe a little more. I want some extra sauce for this. But you want kind of that mocha color. And at this point, when the cream kind of starts to bubble, look how thick that's getting and gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm going to turn off the heat. It's off. Okay? Bubbling has stopped. The donut is gone. The bagel, whatever you want to call it. And this is when I take some good butter, a little bit at a time. And you just use the residual heat of the sauce. And you just fold in this butter. And the butter is going to add some shine. And it's going to add body. It's going to make it thicker. I'm not doing all the butter at once. Because that would break the sauce. It's kind of like a vinaigrette. You don't want to add all the fat or it won't emulsify. So a little bit at a time. And I turn it off the heat because, again, that will also break the butter. So you just want to kind of do this at the end. A poivre is hanging. Steaks have rested. So I think this is a really good time. I'm actually going to shift this over so you guys can see what's going on here. Can you see that, Makayla, I'm getting close? Oh, my gosh. This is just steak glory here. Look at the crust that we got just even across the board. No hot spots, perfectly toasted, on the brink of chard, but just even, right? That's what you want. So as you let this rest, you can see the juices are kind of starting to flow out. You pick up a ribeye, and you can see the natural shape of the ribeye itself and it, where it wants to break off, and you kind of want to follow that. So I'm going to take a knife and kind of just Follow the shape of that round, just using the tip of the knife and just kind of removing that bit. And I like long, beautiful strides with a nice carving knife. Sorry about that, guys. We had a little mic difficulty. I'm going to see if we can't uh, figure this out, but we're kind of on the home stretch anyway, so here we go. 
And so I'm just going to start piling the steak kind of on one side here and just start kind of cutting this down. This is why I cook this moment right here. Just succulent, perfectly cooked steak. So tender, it's like hard to pick up. But you just want to kind of pile that in. Sauce will happen at the end, but let's go fish out those frites and see how we did. Oh yeah. Two little tricks. One, we saved a little bit of that truffle oil so you get the fresh flavor at the end. I guess there's three tricks. And then, a little bit of Parmesan up top. Give that a little toss. And then a little bit of parsley. Parsley, I mean, they're not really gonna taste it, but it's gonna add a little bit of brightness, a little bit of freshness. So just a nice, simple, chunky chop. So you can almost see some of the leaves and then just grab a spat and just kind of toss that through. This is a moment where you just want to take it a moment, do it right, just place this up. Nice big stack. Oh my gosh, I'm going to bring this over. All right, last but not least, we've got our black pepper sauce. So I'm going to get in there. Man, this thing is just tripping out today. There we go. Now, Kyle, if we can get a nice close-up here, I want everyone to be able to see this. There we go. And you just want to kind of lather. <laughs> I don't know if there's a better word. Bathe? <laughs> Bathe this gorgeous steak with. And scrape the bottom. Get it all good. And I'm going to make sure that you guys can see every angle of this because that, my friends, is a joy. It's an absolute joy. So let's get in with a little fork here. We blew up the kitchen, but in all the best ways. So just kind of get in there. We'll start with a little bit of the steak. Sometimes you just have to take a moment. <laughs> I mean, it's so simple. But at the same time, it's just like your mouth is just almost confused. Like, there's just this velvet sauce that wraps around your tongue. The steak itself, you barely need to chew. I mean, it is just gentle, soft, tender. It melts in your mouth. They work together so nicely. Mm. It's all about the black pepper, but it's not spicy, right? You think, it, oh, it's going to be spicy. There's a hum of spice at the very end, but very little. It's more about the floral, that light tones that we talked about. And then you just need something to offset it because it's fatty and rich. I'm going to take a little truffle fry. Fluffy in the middle, crispy on the outside. And again, I'm just going to hold this up to camera. It's just that color is so difficult to get. It's so difficult to get when you're not cooking on blue steel. It's so hard. Same with the steak and this crunch. Crazy. Absolutely nuts. So, enjoy you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Happy cooking. Hey there, I'm Joel Gamron. I'm the head chef and founder of Homemade. And we launched Homemade with the idea that we want to bring cooking and the kitchen to the world. So if you love cooking and want to join us in one of our free live stream cooking classes, head to our website, homemadecooking.com. That's homemadecooking.com to register today.